AITA for going home after I got told to sleep on the floor. I'll preface this by saying that my husband has a friend Carl who he considers to be one of his closest friends. My husband sometimes calls Carl his nicotine because of how much he misses him and wants to spend time with him. They do everything together. They're even co-workers working the same job. Unfortunately, Carlos's wife passed away from cancer three months ago which caused him to distance himself. My husband felt devastated for him. He recently started spending more time with him and brought him meals and new clothes. We planned a three-day vacation to another state. I made a hotel reservation for two. Unbeknownst to me, my husband had invited Carl to come with us. This made me upset because it spoiled the entire vacation I only found out when he went to pick him up. I sucked it up after my husband explained that Carl is a recent widower who's been wallowing in grief for so long and needed this vacation. The problem is money is tight and since Carl hasn't worked ever since his wife passed he couldn't pay for his own room and we didn't have a budget for it. My husband said we should just share one room and I again sucked it since he said we'd be out all day on the beach anyway. First night, I was in bed when my husband and Carl got back. I got woken up by my husband telling me to get out of bed and sleep on THD mattress he put for me on the floor and he and Carl would take the bed. I asked if he was serious and he asked what else is he supposed to do. He said Carl was a guest we can't let him sleep on the floor and at the same time I can't share a bed with Carl while he sleep on the floor. I told him I didn't sign up for this but he told me to suck it and tried to pull Carl as a widower card. I told Carl to get out then got up and got dressed to go home. My husband started yelling me calling me irrational but I wasn't having it. I left the hotel and traveled back home. Carl didn't say anything when he saw me leave except that I was making this non-issue an issue. They got back and my husband refused to even talk about but still said I ruined this for Carl. Nessen acted abhorrently and disgustingly. I admit Carl is struggling and I might ruin this for him but I didn't even know he was coming. Story 2. AITA for still going to my dental appointment after my husband tried to get me to reschedule. So I was having a horrible toothache. I'd taken medication to ease the pain but it was bad. Like you need to go to the dentist level of bad. I scheduled an appointment and was told to come yesterday. My husband's best friend Terry got into an accident and injured his knee. He has been staying with us for several weeks. My husband looks after him as he sees him living alone and in need of assistance. I welcomed him to our home but found myself having to clean up after him and bring him his medication and also cook for him. And if I take a long time to get something done he'd call my husband and basically tell on me which makes my husband mad. He says it's temporary and also since I'm home 24-7 and he is the working then I should help caring for his friend. It has became quite overwhelming because now I can't leave the house if my husband isn't there with his friend. Like I stated previously about the dental appointment, I told my husband the night before and he pitched a hissy fit saying I can't leave Terry home alone. I suggested he take time off work and stay with him but he said it wouldn't work with such a short notice. He suggested that I reschedule but I said no. Even showed him how bad the swelling was. Yet he told me to hold on for another day. He went to work early and I decided I was still going to go. Terry was in the living room and saw me making my way out as mom was waiting at the door. He asked where I was going and I told him to the dental appointment. He had an attitude and raised his voice at me telling me to go back upstairs and cancel. Mom stepped in and started arguing with him asking who he think he is. He went on about how he was unable to move and then threatened to call my husband if I stepped a foot out the door. I took my mom and left. He ended up calling my husband who then tried to call me over and over for two hours till I turned my phone off. Instead of returning home, I went to stay with my mom because I was in tremendous pain and my husband started yelling at me calling me stubborn for still going after he told me to reschedule and irresponsible for leaving his injured friend home alone. Mom told him off which escalated the argument between us. He is now currently staying at home along with his friend while constantly pressuring me to stop hiding behind mom and come deal with the results of having him leave his job for hours after I blindsided him and went against his wishes. Story 3. AITA for tricking my in-laws into trying my food. This isn't necessarily my proudest moment but I am tired of being the outcast. My husband Pete comes from a family where the women are all bakers. I am a baker myself and I used to sell out of my house under my state's cottage laws, but stopped because I like it just being a hobby. Is Silke is the one who is known for her cupcakes and cake pops. When I first met everyone years ago, it was the first thing I learned. Everyone talked about everything she made, even when Pete mentioned how good my stuff was. Everyone would say that Kay sells hers and they're popular so they must be better. Whenever I bring treats, they are often left untouched because they are not Kay's. Yes, I've been told that. They ask me to bring something every get-together and never touch it. To be clear, Kay is mainly a baker whereas I bake and specialize in professionally decorated cakes. Kay says that overly decorated cakes are compensating for their bad taste and Pete's family agrees. We had a BBQ Monday for Memorial Day. 
and everyone made their treats. Kay decided to bring cake pops. She posted them on her Instagram the night before. So, and I know this immature. I made the exact same one she did. Same flavor and design. We got there and everyone asked where my treats were. I said they're in car and I'll get them in a minute. So I waited for everyone to be outside then I brought mine in and put them next to Kay's. After we eat. I noticed the family eating my cake pops and not Kay's. She didn't notice at first and then asked if they weren't feeling cake pops. They said they just ate them and they were the best she ever made and asked what she did different. M.I.L. even said they looked so much better in person than in the picture. Kay was confused and said hers were still on the table. That's when I said, oh, I brought those. Glad you enjoyed them. Her husband said he hadn't had one yet. And everyone else just said yeah. They were okay. Kay didn't say anything the rest of the night. Pete thought it was funny but his brother said yesterday that what I did was mean and I'm just mad. Kay is a better baker. But Pete said it's ridiculous the family, including Kay, puts down my baking when they won't even try it all because I'm not Kay. A-I-T-A. E-T-A. We aren't the only two who bring desserts. Just the ones who tend to bake cake more than others. Everyone else's desserts get eaten to some degree except mine. Edit 2. If it's not clear, everyone includes Kay. She has often tried to teach me techniques that I either already knew or were completely wrong. So she wasn't like an innocent that got caught in the line of fire, or something. Story 4. AITA for being livid at my husband. My husband and I got married last week. I had been super chill throughout the whole wedding planning, and during the actual event. Because I know SHT happens and if anything goes wrong, or not exactly how we wanted, it's not that big of a deal and may even make the wedding more memorable for the guests. The one thing that I told my husband I didn't want to happen was I didn't want him smashing cake in my face. I had a suspicion that he would find it funny to do it. So during the planning, I flat out told him not to do it. I don't think it's funny. I don't want to mess up my makeup that took hours to apply. And I don't want cake on my expensive wedding dress. I told him I would be livid if he did it. He promised that he wouldn't. Well, come the cake cutting time. What did he do? Smashed the cake in my face. It got on my dress and messed up my makeup, just like I knew it would. I'm pretty sure his friends convinced him to do it. Not that that makes it any better. I kept it together, went and cleaned myself up, and put on a smile for the rest of the reception. But afterwards, I let loose on him. I yelled at him that this was the one thing I asked him not to do, and he promised that he wouldn't. He told me I was being dramatic, that it's not a big deal and we should just be enjoying our time as newlyweds. So was I being overly dramatic. A-I-T-A. 